Hey friends, welcome back to my channel. It's Tori. Today I'm very excited to be doing a book review on Yellow Sky Revolt by Baptiste Ponson Wu. <music> When I first rehashed my Twitter account and started getting into the Indian self-pub community again, I noticed right away this beautiful cover that happened across my Twitter feed for this book, which was coming out, I think, about a week or two after I discovered it originally. And the cover immediately drew my attention, and then when I went and looked at the synopsis, I realized very quickly that this was a book that I needed to read. This is Yellow Sky Revolt, and it is book one of the Three Kingdoms Chronicles. The first thing I'm going to say about this book is that this is such a incredibly needed and awesome addition to the historical fiction book community. I can't even. I came into this book knowing almost nothing about the Three Kingdoms, which is historically one of the bloodiest periods of civil war in the entire world history. I was very excited to get a chance to learn more about it, and when I saw the cover for this book on Twitter, I knew immediately that this was a book that I needed to read. Now, I understand that there are a lot of very major historical figures who are mentioned in this book who will be well known by people who have have played video games, including the Three Kingdoms, and even who have possibly read historical records of that time period other than this. Batiste chose to tell us this story through the eyes of Liao Hua, who apparently is a character who gets glossed over in a lot of the historical accounts. He's always kind of just in the background behind the much more prominent historical warrior figures, and despite this, he managed to survive the entire Three Kingdoms wars, and got a front row seat in a lot of the major events that happened during that time period. This book takes us all the way back to ancient China in the year 184 AD or CE. We are thrown right into the beginning of a heated uprising where there is a rebellion of the common people against the Han Dynasty. We are introduced to Liao Hua in a small village of China who is thrown right into the middle of this uprising on the rebels' side, and he becomes something of a figurehead for the army that is very quickly growing and amassing around him. Due to his unique circumstances, Liao Hua gets a front row seat to tell us all about the major players of this rebellion. Not only is this book an incredible introduction to this period of Chinese history, but it is also a fabulous coming of age tale. Liao Hua grows from a small boy in a fairly unknown village all the way up to stand at the side of some of the greatest warriors in Chinese history. Through that, we follow along his own story of idolizing these soldiers and these warriors and wanting to become one of them himself. This is an incredible tale that does a fabulous job of showing both sides of a conflict. It does a phenomenal job at showing just how bleak and messy and chaotic war can be on both sides. It also goes to show the power that certain men have when they are raised to be kind of these mythological heroes, even within their own army. After we're given the up-close and personal account of Liao Hua's involvement with the Yellow Turban Rebellion, we are then thrown into his involvement with the opposite side that he was originally fighting against, and how he starts to realize that the world is a lot bigger than he originally thought, and that people maybe are not as simple as he believed them to be. This is a great exploration of how a young boy believes everything to be black and white, and slowly as he grows throughout the novel, he begins to see in shades of gray. The writing style for this book is super accessible, and that is one of the things that I really love about it, because since this is an era of history that I think a lot of historical fiction fans maybe haven't delved into yet, Batiste does a great job of giving it to us in a very easy to read style. Despite the fact that there are so many characters in the historical account of this war, um, Batiste does a great job of making these characters feel very distinct as he is leading us throughout the story. Once again, I'm coming into this completely fresh, knowing absolutely nothing. I hadn't even heard the name Guan Yu before I started talking to Batiste. And since then, a whole world has opened up where I have been given a wealth of information to research more about this era, and I absolutely love that. I even stumbled across what I now think is honestly one of the coolest statues I have ever seen on the planet. I honestly think this book checks so many boxes when it comes to the mass appeal that it will have to a variety of readers. What I mean by that is I would easily recommend this book for someone like me who was coming in to this historical period brand new and just wanted to learn more about some of the major events. 
That being said, I also see this book being a hit for people that maybe are coming from a place that they know a little bit about the lore and the history of this time period. They'll be met by familiar faces that are perhaps told from a slightly different light than they've seen before. Some people may question the choice to have a young protagonist tell a story of this magnitude, but honestly, this is one of the things that I personally found worked really well for me. Because Liao Hua starts out at a very young age, he's noticing a lot of things about war and about the people that are in it that I think we often gloss over as adults. Oftentimes in military fiction we are told from the perspective of someone who's a veteran or someone who's in the trenches but has been a soldier for a while or even a young soldier who would be slightly older than Liao Hua is in this book. I think using a younger child's perspective on something that has this kind of magnitude and impact really goes to show how dedicated Batiste was to showing us the everyday trials and life of the people who were involved in this story. He holds nothing back despite the fact that it is told from a child's perspective and Liao Hua has to grow up in the middle of this horrific amount of violence and warfare. And I think that that makes it even more especially poignant to read because the whole time, I was as invested in how Liao Hua was experiencing the rebellion as I was in the history of the rebellion itself. I know that Batiste intends this to be a, I believe, 10 book series, and I think it is going to be an incredible classic when he is finished with it. I think anyone who is even remotely interested in historical fiction should pick up this book because it really showcases a era of history that is underrepresented in historical fiction in a way that is incredibly accessible to a variety of readers. My only critique of this is that I felt like in the second half of the book there were some moments that I felt were a little jarring and the transitions from one event to the other felt a little bit rushed. I still stand by my comment that this is an incredibly solid debut and I am very much looking forward to seeing what Batiste ends up doing with the rest of the series. If you have not picked up this book yet, I highly recommend it, you guys. I will put all of the links down in the description box below and also make sure to check out the interview that I did with Batiste on my channel. I will link that down below and it'll probably be up in the cards wherever the cards are as well. Um, so definitely go watch that. Batiste is an incredible guy and he has a wealth of information on this area of history. He's done a ton of research and it's just fascinating to listen to him talk about it. So definitely go check that out. And as always, guys, thank you so much for joining me here on my channel. I hope you are having a fabulous week. I hope you are reading some great five-star reads and I will see you in the next video.